Greetings to all the students. We are once again here with Human Digestive System Part 2. Uh, you can see Human Digestive System Part 1. We have finished in Part 1 digestion from mouth till, uh, you know, the digestion in small intestine. Uh, the first part of the small intestine duodenum. We have seen the role of liver and pancreas. Today we will continue from the function of liver and pancreas okay so you can see here uh, this is our liver and uh, how it is connected with our stomach and this tiny let me show you with a different color pen so that you can understand this one is our pancreas and uh, pancreas is connected you can see this is a tube like structure with which the pancreas is connected with our duodenum so pancreas is bringing its juice to the duodenum and uh, this is our liver uh, this is our liver and this liver contain this yellow color uh, this green color gallbladder gallbladder stores the juice of the liver and then you can see this tube-like structure which is coming right to our duodenum. And this is called bile duct. So in the previous video, I have already told you that how liver is producing, uh, what this bile is, what is the color of bile, what is the function of bile, it emulsifies fat. Emulsification is not the digestion. It is just the breaking down of the bigger fat molecules into tiny micromolecules so that they can be digested and uh, I showed you the the role of the pancreas what this pancreas does it produces three different digestive enzymes pancreatic amylase lipase and trypsin and they digest uh, you know completely everything maltose to glucose uh, peptides to amino acids and mm, fatty fats emulsified fats into fatty acids so we have covered all these things in our previous video you can see the previous video so let's move to the next one this is the pancreas so very small delicate organ leaf like structure okay so this is the leaf like structure and uh, it is connected with our duodenum so here is the bile duct a tube like structure and this bile duct is, is bringing the bile sorry Pancreatic duct. I'm very sorry. Pancreatic duct is bringing the pancreatic juice into the duodenum. Okay. So next, ileum. So what is ileum? You can see here uh, this pink color part. Okay. This pink color part is starting from here and this coiled long tube-like structure which is there filling up our entire lower abdominal region. It's a long, thin tube. This is the second part of the small intestine. What is the first part of the small intestine? This duodenum. Duodenum is the first part of the small intestine. And the second part of the small intestine is this coil tube, which is called ileum. So uh, after the digestion of everything is done in the duodenum, uh, the food, the very simple liquid form of the food, it start coming and filling up in the duodenum. Uh, sorry, in the ileum. So what will happen in the ileum then? So before understanding what happens in the ileum, we should know the adaptations of the ileum. What are the adaptation of the ileum? How ileum has got some special features for which it is best suited for the uh, absorption of the food absorption of the food and some little bit digestion is also taking place in the ileum but mostly the fine molecules the simplest molecules of glucose amino acids and fatty acids from the ileum they start diffusing into the blood so our blood is now receiving the digested food molecules from the ileum so now <clears throat> what are some of the adaptations of the ileum so first of all you can see that uh, how long this ileum is okay our ileum is very long, five to uh, six meters in length. Okay, this ileum, this coil tube like a structure. Since it is very long, all the food molecules, large 
number of the food molecules can be filled up here and can easily long time for the food molecules to come and then go into the is a very it's very long its length is too great so that the food molecules can be filled up inside it and can go into the blood so our blood can instantly get the food molecules so the first adaptation is length its length provides a very large surface area for the uh, you know food food molecules to fill up inside it and can go into the blood uh, the second adaptation is uh, you can see that this ileum i want to show you this picture uh, unfortunately the picture is not here but the ileum has got uh, you know uh, tiny finger like projections here this one uh, the inner side of the ileum you can see how these as if these are the thin fingers but they are not actually fingers they are finger like projections okay so there are so many of them the whole inner lining of the ileum you know is has these finger like projections which are called villi okay so you can see they are micro villi they are very small and tiny and uh, from the inside the ileum appears just like the surface of the towel how the towel has got tiny furs over it in the same way our ileum has got tiny villi on the inner side which increases the surface area for the absorption of the food same way uh, the furs on the towel increases the surface area of the towel for the absorption of any liquid okay you clean a surface which is wet with a plain cloth and with a towel which one is going to dry up the surface well towel why because it has got tiny furs over it and it can uh, the surface area has increases many times millions of times and the absorption has also increases millions of times so the same is the case over here tiny villi tiny villus singular is villus so they are the inner lining is you know furry having villi and each and every tiny villus is absorbing the food molecules how uh, this is the second adaptation the first adaptation is its length the second adaptation is villi increasing the surface area the third adaptation is you can see the blood vessels it is richly supplied with blood vessels there are blood vessels all around the villi okay so huge amount of blood is coming and huge amount of uh, food molecules are being taken away so there is a dense network of blood vessel around the villi okay the fourth adaptation you can say that uh, Uh, this wall of the villi this wall of the villi let me show it to you with a, another color pen uh with a black color pen this wall of the villi starting from it is made up of a single cell wall single cell lining it means the wall of the villi is so thin its thinness is exactly the thinness of one cell so that the food molecules from here the food mo molecules uh, from the uh, villi suppose these are the food molecules this is one food molecule this is another like this there are millions of food molecules are coming and surrounding the villi so the food molecules can easily cross this single cell epithelium lining and can get inside the blood vessels like this so suppose if it was a very thick layer the food molecules would have taken a long time so the food molecules would have taken a very long time to to get inside the uh, blood so that's why it is made up of a very thin line all right then what else it has 
you can see right in the middle this green color something actually it's not green in color just in order to make it prominent this green color tube like structure is inside every villi it's inside every villi so what is this thing this is lacteal what is lacteal lacteal is a tiny branch of our lymphatic system what is our lymphatic system throughout our body we have got a network of the tube like structure so you can see at the base of this villus there is an artery red color there is a vein blue color there is a nerve which which is shown yellow color and there is a lacteal which is green in color so the different colors are here just in order to uh, you know we can distinguish uh, the different tube like structures here so throughout our body we have got a network of these tubes arteries veins nerves lacteals so arteries and veins are the part of our circulatory system they are they are carrying blood nerves are carrying the impulses Uh, from brain to different parts of our body and lacteal the lymphatic system it consists of a white color fluid called lymph inside the lymphatic system there is a white color fluid which is called lymph let me write here l y m p h lymph so this lymph is nothing but blood plasma in which we have got our white blood cells lymphocytes which fight and which produces anti which produce antibodies and make our immune system okay fight against the infections so we have got a lacteal we have got a lacteal in every villi let me show it to you the picture of the villus again so you can see here in each and every villi first of all there is a network of blood vessels okay around each villus inside each villus there is a network of blood vessels so let me show it to you uh, so all around the villus there is a network of blood vessels like this they are surrounding the villi all of them bringing huge amount of blood and taking huge amount of the molecules away and right in the middle of every villus there is a lacteal a branch of our lymphatic system which contains uh, lymphocytes the blood blood uh, cells and they fight against the infections they fight against the infection so now what is the relation in between why we are doing this uh, you know uh, lacteals and lymphatic system now see why we are doing this thing the molecules of the glucose and amino acids okay let me uh, write them with the uh show them with a different color pen so that you can understand suppose uh, the green color molecules are the molecules of glucose okay so this is the glucose molecule then suppose this uh, blue color molecule uh this blue color molecule is the molecule of amino acid the simplest form of protein okay and then this purple color is the molecule of fatty acids the simplest form of fat how they will go into our body in our blood so the molecules of glucose and amino acid straight away diffuses into the blood vessels crossing this single cell lining of the villus they will go away they will diffuse into the blood whereas the molecules of the fatty acids instead of going to the blood they will make their way into the lacteal okay so they will go into the lacteal now what will happen the, the fatty acids they will circulate in our lymphatic system and then finally they will release in the blood okay but initially they will circulate in our lymphatic system okay now what will happen to the molecules of glucose and amino acids now see let me go to the previous picture uh, so that i can explain you well this thing now try to understand this idea all the molecules of the glucose and amino acid from our uh, from our intestine from our ileum all the molecules of the glucose and amino acids uh, via blood vessel they will make their way from intestine to the liver how 
the intestine and the liver are connected with each other by means of you know suppose the intestine is here this is the intestine okay so all the blood vessels which are surrounding the villus villi thousands of millions and billions of villi all the blood vessels combine together from the villi and these blood vessels let me show you with a different color pen so that you can understand okay so here all the blood vessels combine together from all the villi the blood vessels combine together okay and they will finally open in a main blood vessel which goes to the liver what is the name of this main blood vessel when it goes to the liver it becomes branched like this okay so this blood vessel is called hepatic portal vein see hepatic portal vein so hepatic portal vein is bring, bringing the blood rich in glucose and amino acids directly not in our any other part of the body or not in our blood but for first the blood will go to the liver because liver is the check post liver has to check the composition of everything before it is finally released in the blood so what liver will do liver will check how much glucose we need in our blood only that much glucose liver is going to release in the blood what will happen to the rest of the glucose the rest of the glucose will remain stored in the liver for some time let's say for 5 to 6 hours because after 5 and 6 hours when our again our blood glucose level will fall we will be needing this glucose so temporarily for 5 to 6 hours the glucose will remain stored in our liver in the form of the glycogen why not in the form of the glucose because it is too simple and can easily diffuse out of the liver cells liver will not be able to hold back the glucose molecules so liver will collect them bind them together and make a complex structure for glycogen so glycogen remain stored in the liver so maybe next after 5 to 6 hours when you will be needing the glucose your blood needing the glucose then what will happen liver will break down this glycogen into the glucose and release it again so this is how the liver is controlling the 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 release of the glucose it should be released or it should not be released that liver is going to decide by the order of our pancreas how that we will see in the chapter of uh, chemical coordination but now at this stage we will understand that whatever the blood from the ileum goes to the liver via hepatic portal vein it is rich in glucose amino acids vitamins minerals so many things so glucose whatever the glucose is needed in our blood liver will release that much glucose the rest will be stored in the form of glycogen whatever the amino acids needed in the blood only that much amino acid will be released in the blood and the remaining amino acid will be deaminated what is deamination deamination is a chemical reaction in which you can see here we have got our uh, you know so many blood vessels are here so the the blood is receiving the necessary amino acids and the the excess of amino acids will be deaminated they will be broken down into glucose and urea urea is a nitrogenous very toxic waste product so glucose will either be stored or will be released in the blood but this urea liver will not like to hold it because it's very poisonous so liver will release this uh, urea in our blood so blood will take this urea via circulation during blood circulation to our kidneys and the kidneys are going to excrete this this urea in the form of urine okay so this is how the glucose and amino acids are reaching to our blood but the fatty acids are not going to the blood directly first of all they will go to the lactin they will circulate in the lymphatic system and then they will release in the blood uh, general blood circulation okay okay then uh, this is how the the food molecules are being absorbed the food molecules are being absorbed in this way now uh, you will read the slides and now we will see in our ileum we have got some enzymes and this particular slide is only you know for cambridge students okay this slide number 10 is only for cambridge students Uh, at excel students do not have this part so the enzymes in the ileum ileum also has some of the enzymes what these enzymes uh, so you have to read the slide from here maltase sucrase 
let me annotate it. Maltase, sucrase, lactase, peptidase, some lipase. And who is producing these enzymes? The cells of the villi. So maltase is going to act on maltose and will convert finally into glucose. Sucrase will act on sucrose and will convert it into final form fructose. Lactase will act on lactose sugar, the one which is there in the milk, and finally convert it into galactose. So lactose intolerance. There are some people which have lactose intolerance. They cannot digest the dairy product. You know the reason why? They do not produce this enzyme lactase. So they cannot digest lactose. Peptidase will digest the remaining peptides and convert them into final form amino acid. Lipase will digest the fats and will convert them into fatty acids. So this part, uh, you have to remember the name of the enzymes which are there in our uh, small intestine, ileum. Okay, done this part. Now we have got assimilation. What is assimilation? When the food molecules of glucose, amino acids and fatty acid, when they reach to the blood, blood will take them to our cells. Blood will drop them to our cells. And then what will happen? Our cells are going to utilize them. That is called assimilation. So glucose molecules, you all know, we have done the chapter of respiration in the previous video. So respiration is actually uh, glucose reacts with oxygen and produces uh, energy. So the glucose upon reaching the cells will be utilized in the cellular respiration. And uh, if the glucose is in excess, it remains stored in our cell cytoplasm as glycogen for some time. And uh, uh, what happens to the molecule? Uh, one uh, molecule, one gram of uh, glucose will produce 17 kilojoules of energy during respiration. Okay, Amino acids, when they reach to the cells, they will be used in bodybuilding, growth, manufacture of the, you know, new uh, proteins in protein synthesis. Like we have got enzymes and hormones, how they are coming in our body. These amino acids are used up. Uh, healing wounds, making new cell membranes, building growth, all these things are taking place. Okay. Uh, then what will happen to the fatty acids? The fatty acids are actually the reserve in our cell, reserve fuel of our cells. So if you have, you are taking enough glucose in your diet, glucose is the main fuel. So fat will not be able to uh, burn and produce energy as long as you have enough glucose in your diet. But as soon as you stop eating glucose or reduce the amount of the glucose in your diet, the fats will get chance to provide you with energy. The fats will burn and provide energy and they will produce double energy than glucose has produced. Otherwise, fats will not be utilized. They will remain stored in the cell and they will take the shape of this. What is this thing? The fat was a small droplet and then it become bigger and bigger and bigger and it has taken the most of the space in the cytoplasm and it has become an adipose cell. So those who are taking lots of glucose, actually they are depositing fat in their cells. They are not giving chance to their fats to burn and provide them with energy. So many adipose cells will form adipose tissues and they, then they will make layers over layers over layers around our hips, around our belly, around our shoulders and we become obese in that way. Okay. Large intestine. Okay. So this is the large intestine. Let me show it to you. Uh, a small intestine you can see. Uh, uh, this is the small intestine. This part, this coil tube-like structure is a small intestine. And then the small intestine will open in a broad tube-like structure. This is the large intestine. So the large intestine is from here till the end. Okay, so where is the large intestine? Let me, let me show it to you again. Where is the large intestine? <laughs> Uh, which color pen will go nicely? Let's try blue. Just wait a minute. Uh, let's try blue color. Yes. This is the large intestine. Here, this broad tube, this one, this one, and this large portion. 
So this last portion is the rectum where temporarily the waste products will be stored and then they will be excreted out. And this tube, this tube is called colon. Colon and rectum are the part of the large intestine. Now see what happens in the large intestine. This is the large intestine. Okay, we have removed the small intestine. Now we can see only the large intestine. So most of the molecules of the glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, vitamins, minerals, everything has gone to the blood. Only the undigestible, the one which we cannot digest, dietary fibers, cellulose cell walls, vegetables, whatever fruits, fibers you are eating, they will come in the, uh, they will come in the, uh, this uh, uh, large intestine. And you can see they have become quite harder. The reason is that from this waste, water and salt will be diffusing into the blood. Water will diffuse into the blood by osmosis. Salts will be diffused into the blood by active transport. So this is the reason that why by the end of this uh, large intestine, uh, these remaining leftover things become quite harder and drier. And that is the stool. And then in once or twice a day, you are going to, uh, you know, uh, excrete it out, expel it out. Now, since I have by mistake used the word excrete out, what is the difference in between excretion and uh, defecation or ejection? Excretion and ejection. Excretion is the removal of the waste products from each and every cell of your body. From where the waste products are coming in our cells, the waste products are coming in our cells by the chemical reactions metabolism. So that is excretion, but the removal of the waste product from hair is actually the ejection. Okay, is actually the ejection. Now we will move to the net, next part. Uh, the next part is diarrhea. What is diarrhea? So diarrhea is loose watery uh, stool because of any bacterial infection. A, person, a person's uh, waste product becomes very liquid and watery. All the water and salts comes out of the body and it can be fetal, it can be cholera. So why it is happening? Because the bacteria, if we ingest the harmful bacteria, they start producing toxic waste products in our intestine and as a result the cells start producing chloridines in our intestine so chloridines are coming from the intestine from the cells of the intestine into the intestine so whatever the things are there in the intestine whatever the food is there in the intestine it becomes highly concentrated because of the chloridines and the blood becomes dilute so osmosis takes place and uh, from the blood uh, water and salts, uh, they by osmosis, blood uh, start releasing water into the intestine. And uh, the water is being collected in our intestine and it is released in the form of the watery stool. So if it is not treated uh, on time, it can be, uh, you know, it can be very fatal. Uh, a person can even die also. So what is actually the thing? The concentration of the things inside the intestine, the concentration of the liquid food inside the intestine increases because the cells start producing chloridines and the blood becomes dilute. So water comes out of the blood into the intestine by osmosis. Then we are coming towards the end, uh, the general functions of the liver. Liver has got some other functions as well, other than producing the bile and digesting the emulsifying the fat glucose metabolism is also taking place. It is deciding how much glucose has to be released or how much it has to be stored uh, from your food, vitamin A, D, K, and B12. Like these vitamins we are consuming in a very, very small micro quantities. So they have to be well stored or else our body will not be able to utilize them because they are such a small quantity. So liver is going to uh, you know, store vitamin A, D, K, and B12. And this is the reason that why animals' liver in your diet is a good source of vitamin A, D, K, and B12. 
detoxification of the harmful substances many harmful substances are going to the liver via intestine because of the bacterial decomposition in our blood in our intestine uh, plus uh, whatever the you know harmful chemicals uh, you know uh, the 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 the, the the colors the artificial colors uh, and the 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 things which we uh, the the chemicals which we store in our, which we put in the food uh, for you know preservation purpose preservatives everything they are harmful so liver is going to detoxify them and then after every four months our red blood cells are you know broken down and new red blood cells are produced so when the red blood cells are broken down inside the hemoglobin of the red blood cells there is iron so this iron is not wasted it will be stored in the liver so the animal's liver is a good source of iron as well okay so that's all for today uh, very soon we are going i'm going to make a video on the you know diet part and the food tests so we will go chapter wise uh, according to our o level syllabus but the students of class 6 7 8 pre o levels o levels all of them will be uh, you know benefited from these uh, notes the notes are also here you can read the slides you will get the ready made notes here that's all uh, for today see you soon inshallah